Hello and welcome to The Mum Show. Coming up on today's show, we are joined by singer and mum of three, Hope Plum, as we explore how to help understand race and diversity with our children. So get comfortable, grab yourself a cup of tea and let's get started. another episode of The Mum Show. I'm joined today by Pastor Claire Hooper, child therapist Emma Brown, and we also have a really special guest with us, singer and mum of three, Hope Plum. Yay! Welcome home. Thank you so We're much so for excited. having me. We're so glad so you are happy here. To be here. Thank Aww. you. And today we're going to be exploring how we help our children understand race and diversity, mm. which I think is a huge topic for yeah. us to it's very emotive topic isn't yeah. it for us to explore i'm always challenged because i am feel like i'm in the demographic that is fairly privileged i am you know white middle class and so it's always difficult although i'm passionate and i mm. care about people mm. i always know that sometimes maybe my filter just isn't mm. always what do you think yeah i think it's just an important conversation yeah. and an ongoing conversation that we just need to keep on having. Yeah. I think as soon as we stop talking about it, that's when problems arise. So mm. I think just to make people aware that it is an issue. It's real. You, you mm. might walk down the street in Bradford or Birmingham, where I'm from, and see so many different races and cultures, yeah. but mm. there's a huge difference. And actually, how do we bridge that divide? How yeah. are those people living? How mm. how is it different from from what yeah. you may be used to? I think it's, yeah, it's just a conversation we need yeah. to keep having. And with our children, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. much. I, so. I find it really interesting because I found that when my children are little, I mean, they're still quite little. They're nine and seven mm. now but they've never seemed to notice mm. a lot. And um, they've got friends from different yeah. cultures, from different ethnicities, yeah. and they'll tell me all their similarities. And if you say, what are your differences? They'll say, well, she likes football and I like netball. Yes. Mm. So and you're like, okay, <laughs> well, that's great. And then I think, well, does that mean then that where the world ends up going on this conversation mm. is that it's completely socially impacted? Mm. And does that therefore mean it's we can impacted. really change the narrative of that as yeah, parents. Yeah. I'm curious. I have no answers, but I'm yeah. curious. Yeah. I think it's something to do with having those conversations because sometimes our children just say, children are so innocent, aren't they? They don't know these complex mm. rules and mm. social mm. things that are going on in the yeah. world yet, do they? So they just sometimes say what they see. Yeah. And actually, sometimes as, as adults, if a child says, well, Mummy, why is that, why's that lady got a different colour skin? Or why has that <laughs> lady got dark skin? Uh, you know, we, as, as parents, we can go, oh, gosh, <laughs> come on, let's just yeah. you know, move on, move on, and brush those conversations under the carpet. Mm -hmm. When actually, it's exactly at that moment that we should be opening right. up those conversations. Yeah. I, I had a, a, an experience just like that only the other week with my little boy. So, I mean, this is a huge conversation in itself, but hair products for me yeah. are not readily available in boots, lawyer, yeah. you know, yeah. chemists or whatever. I have to go either... Amazon Prime it or eBay it or go yeah. to um, a place where there are more black people around. Yeah, um, so the, where I go to buy my hair products, where I can get it cheaper, it's a majority kind of Asian culture. Yeah. And this shop is incredible. It sells kind of everything. And I took my kids and we walked into the shop and Archie, my little boy, went, Mummy, are we in a different country? Because nobody, there was no white person in there. Yeah. And it was one of those yeah. opportunities, Emma, where I should yeah. have said... No, obviously I did say no, but yeah. I should have, we should have engaged in a conversation, yeah. but it was just like, no, shh, shh come on, quick, yeah. let's, let's just move on quickly. But really you're hard, so right, it? I should have, and I probably yeah. will today, <laughs> go back and continue the conversation yeah. about yeah. Kind of where people live and yes, totally. people want to live yeah. with other people that it's, are similar yeah, to yeah. them. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's just it's so you, difficult. You bump into that awkwardness of that not knowing what to do. You face your own embarrassment yes. yeah. of what your child's saying or doing, especially in the diversity as well. I used mm. to teach adults um, with a variety of needs. Some were, uh, physical disabilities are working with uh, wheelchairs or even just... Even just the, the challenges of life that maybe that maybe hit them. Anyway, yeah, so my children would come to some of my lessons mm. and they would ask outright, 
mummy, why yeah. is that person like that? Yeah. Why are they yeah. like this? And there were times when I felt embarrassed, mm. but I just had to just, you know, gather my thoughts and bend down to their level and just yeah. explain in a very kind way yeah. what I understood. But even then, sometimes I wondered whether have I offended that person that mm. I brought attention to it. Do you know, mm. it's yeah. hard to know, yeah, isn't it? it? Is, yeah, it so is. To get really that right. Yeah. But I do think it is important that we meet our kids where they're at with mm. it as well, because otherwise, you know, like you said, Marina, that you know, it, it, they don't notice the difference yeah. until they do notice the difference. Yeah. Uh, but we've got to kind of address those situations when they come up mm. and not just try and hope that someone else mm. is going to do that for us or or try and, you know, mm. engineer situations. I just think we need to be, like you've said initially, mm. Hope, mm. have these open conversations right from the yeah. start. Mm. That's it. And you know what we're saying about kind of kids not noticing? And I know we were chatting before about the age that maybe your kids yeah. do start mm. to notice the difference. I feel for my kids, they've noticed way earlier yeah, than like, other children would do. But mm. I think the reason being is because I'm black and my husband's white. Yeah. Right. So it's just there in front of them that we've got two different skin mm. colours. Yeah. So they're, my kids are always oh, saying gosh. kind of, OK, well, I'm not as dark as mummy, but I'm not as white as daddy. Yeah. And it's just a conversation that we have. Yeah. So, But they've noticed super young. I mean, my twins are six and Betsy's five. So it's yeah. just a con but it's just an ongoing yeah. kind of conversation. Mm -hmm conversation in our house about different skin colours and yeah. what it means and I don't think there's no they're not seeing a difference yes yeah between yes. us it's yeah. literally the shade of the skin yeah, yeah. That, that's all it is yeah absolutely yeah. I think my kids have um, my little boy has because my husband's Spanish heritage mm. and they're all darker than me and I'm really pale so they'll notice for instance that I have to apply sun lotion <laughs> No, they are all glowing, not that I'm jealous <laughs> or resentful. Um, but, you know, they'll, they'll pull out on that fact. And my, and my son in the car, he did sort of process, what's the point of different skin colours? Mm. Like, what's the reason for yeah. that? Why did that need to happen? Yeah. And we just kind of explored, like, you know, well, actually, different skin reacts different in different types of weather. Mm. And if I go to Spain, mm. I'm really burnt. If you guys go, mm. you're having a merry old time. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, not resentful <laughs> at not all. <laughs> but actually, yeah. I find that um, but my kids have noticed other things at really awkward mm. stages, like in the toddler yeah. years. I remember a poor elderly lady talking to my daughter and thinking she has a wonderful conversation. And she was just in a stage of life where her voice had really dropped and her clothing was a little ambiguous. Oh. And my daughter just looked at her and went, are you a man oh. or a lady? And I was like, oh my goodness. And it's I just, know. it's just, you know, it comes up all the time oh, where yeah. you just cringe and go, oh gosh. But <laughs> thankfully the lady had sort of said, oh, I'm an old lady, don't oh. you know? When you oh. get to my age, your voice will go oh. there. And, <laughs> and it was really kind of warm and everything, yeah. but it's, yeah. but I felt that. Yeah. I mm. felt that shame for her where mm. I'm just like, oh my goodness. And that lovely natural curiosity that comes with children mm. when we don't allow them to ask questions yeah, and right. begin to explore the different mm. and wonderful complexities that God made humankind mm. we we stunt their development as yeah. understanding the wonderful yeah. complexities That's of the right. way that God made mankind mm. yeah the curiosity I, that, I'm curious right. I do want to know there's questions that yeah. sometimes my children have asked I'm like that's a really good question yeah. yes. what does your hair feel like yeah. I'm like I've always wanted to ask yeah. that question, yeah. but I feel too embarrassed. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, so it's, true. It's so important. And I think, um, yeah, I was thinking that kind of this morning when I was doing my hair, kind of my hair does look different, my hair does feel yeah. different, and we just need to ex explore that and mm. ask the question. It's yeah. not going to offend me. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, ask yeah. me. Please don't just touch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> it's not even that it's just a kind of mauling it's like when you're pregnant yeah. isn't it and someone oh, just totally, like yeah. mauls your belly and you're like just ask please <laughs> I, will, I will say yes but just yeah. ask like don't yeah, just yeah. do it I yeah. yeah yeah so yeah I just think by all means ask the question let's yeah. let's Again, keep yeah. the conversation going. I, I, I think, though, as parents, sometimes we, if we don't know the answers, mm. and if and if we don't have all the answers, then that's another reason why we, you know, it's embarrassment. Yes, yeah. but mm. I think also if we just don't know, yeah. you know, sometimes we haven't got all the answers, yeah. have we? Yeah. And I think that's okay to also address. Don't yeah. don't just Absolutely. brush that under the carpet. Do you know what? That's a really good question, and yeah. you know, let's think about that. How mm. how yeah. can we find that out mm. together? Mm. Who can we talk yeah. to? I'm curious as well, because I do think we live in a culture at the moment where there is so much political correctness, there's so much 
politically correct terminology yeah. and behaviours, I can't keep up to date no, with it. Yeah. And, and I think, well, I don't, no. I, I'm not quite sure what mm. we're supposed to say at the moment. Yeah. I don't know how we're supposed to respond to that. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I know. That's true. And Jesus was so all about everybody. Yeah. yeah. And we've, we have, from the, for the need to protect certain mm. kinds of people, we have had to develop a drive in certain areas. Mm. So we've had to drive for, even, even the fact that we're having to cover race and right. diversity and differences is so not kingdom culture mm. yeah. so not the way that if we lived by the bible's kingdom culture Absolutely. we wouldn't have to tackle these yeah. things yeah. And, yeah. And, and in some ways it saddens me but it doesn't make me want to avoid it no. but it does no. make me sometimes go why can we not just take the bible's principles mm. help teach our children and raise a generation that are not just tolerant mm and not just embracing, that actually it doesn't affect them. Right, yeah, it right. isn't an issue. Mm, not yeah. the word tolerance even, a tolerant, why should I have to have yeah. a tolerance yeah. for another? No, yeah, I'm not, I don't totally. tolerate people. Yeah, yeah. I love people. Yeah, yeah. I love all the complex and wonderful things that God has made. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, trying to raise our kids like that. But yeah. that's, that's, that's the absolute ideal though, isn't it? Yeah, and we are so it, far yeah. away right. from that ideal. <laughs> you know I'm right. always over on that. I know, I know, and it is. <laughs> well, you're both here. <laughs> 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 a realist and an idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I, you know, I work with young people who are affected um, yeah. and who have yeah. been impacted mm. by um, kind of being fe felt to be being bullied mm. for difference. You know, not just with race, but with their belief system, mm. with all sorts of difference. Yes. And, and it's and it really it can have a huge impact yeah. on yeah. On young people's mental health, yeah. their identity, their self esteem. Yeah. So it is an issue. We, you know, yeah, that would be a, a real ideal, wouldn't I know. it? It's the vision ahead of us. It is, yeah. absolutely. We've got to work out how to get there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's all right, I will be the diplomat. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, let's have a listen to what our kids have to say. Brilliant. We'll check out from the children. And action. I think the thing that makes us human is we're the only things that can make things like this, like this, like this room. Like, no, nothing else can make things like this. Like, an ant can make an anthill, a bird can make a nest, but none of them can make something like this. Well, we're, we're all special. Like, some people might be able to do things that other people can't, but you're still special in that same way. Because God didn't want us all to be the same, and they wanted us to have different, different person. I can't see it. Different personalities than everyone else. Why do you think God wants us all to be different? Oh, I don't know. Um, if we were all the same, then we'll just be like having the same thing every single day. We would all look the same. We would all um, be doing the same thing. We would all go to the same school. Everything we do would be the same. If I described every single thing that made people different from each other, then well, we'd probably be here for the rest of eternity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, some people are big, some people are small, some people talk fast and loud and confidently, some people, not so much. But although we all have our differences, we're all made in God's image, and although our skin might be a different colour, although maybe our eyes might be a different colour, although maybe you might be big and I might be small, and uh, like there are all kind, we're all the same in one way. We're all made in His image. No matter what we look like, no matter what we are, we're all they're all special in God's eyes. Do you think people should all be treated the same, and why? Um, I think um, everyone should be treated differently because we all have different needs, and if we're all treated the same, then. One of us might get poorly for being treated the same as everyone else and they need different needs for everyone else. So do you think that everybody deserves respect? Yes, I don't really think that everybody should be treated exactly the same as Lear and Zach have both said. But we do need the same levels of we need to be treated the same, with the same respect for each other's different needs. If we weren't showing people respect, we won't be. Um, we wouldn't be exactly listening to the questions. We won't be listening 
and um, and we wouldn't be very like we wouldn't um, exactly um, know what to say. We would be listening to that, um, so it's good to show it back to others. I would love to give you a bit of background on that video, okay? Because I spent about 45 minutes on this topic with these kids. And you know, when it came to actually discussing the nitty gritty of race and diversity, they just, they just, their, their minds just didn't go there. And it really, I really struggled with that. I was like, oh, God, couldn't be more obvious. And I didn't want to ask leading questions mm. to create the answer I'm looking for. I felt that's always really important. So I, I'm quite, open with yeah. my questioning yeah. so they can lead the discussion yeah. but then thinking about it now and watching it you know all three of those kids so Zach his parents are from oh gosh if I get this wrong <laughs> I think they're from Zambia but but but, but I may be wrong so disclaimer to the mother <laughs> um <laughs> so I think they're from Zambia and they're living in Britain so it's very multicultural mm. Lilia was born in Spain she's my daughter oh. She's got her dad, who is half Spanish, her grandpa is Spanish, and I'm white British. Yeah. And then Joshua, at the end, his mum is very blonde, white British, and his dad is Paraguayan. Wow. And I actually think maybe they were completely maybe. the three wrong right. children <laughs> <laughs> to be doing that interview with. <laughs> Because they're very embracing. Yeah. Really? I mean, they're so it's embracing. They're talking what they about live. God's image. You, yeah. know, you know, we are made in God's image. God, and, and then the scripture that talks about um, God, look, man looks at the outward appearance mm. and God looks at the heart. Mm -hmm. it's, it's humanity that puts these titles and labels and differences and makes it an issue. It's not God that makes that mm, an issue yeah. because he, he connects spirit to spirit. Mm, and actually, of course, our actions lead us to places, but, and our, but our faith and who we are and how we connect to our Father God is that. So when I say to my kids in the morning, which I do every morning, go and learn something to make the world a better place. Mm. And I, that, that is like, I feel like a genuine thing I want them to learn. Mm. But I think that race and inclusion and diversity and acceptance, that was a big message of Jesus. Yeah, mm. like that was a priority for oh, yeah. him. Oh. And there's a lot of issues in the world that you can cover and he didn't get to live everything out. You know, there's a lot for us to understand mm. from what he taught right. us. But that was a very definite, you know, yeah. you've got Peter's vision on the rooftop mm. of the, all the different food. food. You've got him with the woman at the well. You've got him with yeah, this talk and with the story of the Good mm. Samaritan. You know, everything that we put in place, Jesus did actually try and smash that 2,000 years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He didn't try. He taught yeah. us to smash that 2,000 years <laughs> yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you failed at that. Yeah. But, you know, that was what he put in place. There's some proactivity that's got to go on there, hasn't there, to change this yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So what do you think we can do to, as mums of the next generation, we are in a really powerful position mm, yeah. where actually we're, we've, we've been given purity to begin with, mm. you know, we've been given open minds to begin with. Yeah. So how can we really help these kids to develop around a more positive narrative? Mm. I think it starts with us. I think it starts with, you know, kind of having conversations like we are, to, we are today yeah. and being able to kind of look at our lives, look at our own mm. prejudices potentially, mm look at our own mm. value bases, look at what, you know, look at our worlds, how small are our, mm. are our worlds, yeah. who is in our world. Mm. And actually, you know, we, you know, we live, you know, in, in, a, in an area where there is huge multicultures, um, but how, how narrow is our small mm. little network? Mm. Uh, and how do we start to break down some of those barriers or yeah. how do we start to reach out? Um, so I, I absolutely think it's got to, to start with us yeah. because mm. actually, you know, if you, if we kind of, if we want to live this out, we we can't be separate. We've got to kind of start right. and being at, it's got to it's got to be an active thing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We can have the conversations, but then we've got to kind of put that into practice, haven't we? Yeah, that's a challenge. And and, yeah, and do that because yeah. I think it's it's easier to hate other other uh, it, uh, hate hate breeds through mm. separation. Mm. Yeah. And I think when mm. you get up close, it's yes. really difficult yes. yeah. to hate somebody up close. Mm. Yeah. I think that's the reality, that's isn't really it? True. I do think that's reality. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it, it, it is easy to hate what you don't know, yeah. to hate what you don't yeah. understand. I think that's an amazing phrase. So yeah. when you get up close to someone, you realise that actually we all bleed red blood yeah. at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, um, yeah that's so important. I think with, with my, for myself, I um, mm. was adopted and I was adopted into a white family. So again, kind of that... The, the the talk about race was just really open um from a really young age and so my you know my mum and dad were white and but that never 
I knew, I, I remember going through the adoption process. I remember going to court and all of that. Um, so it was never a surprise, you're adopted, obviously because, yeah. of, because of the different skin colours. So I've, again, grown up with yeah. this, yeah. like those children, you know, like the kids in the VT. Yeah. It's just been yeah. the, my life. And it, it, as a matter of fact, I've been around probably more white people than I have yeah. black people, just because you know, church was, was mostly white people. and But my mum tried really hard to um, take me to, I guess, do different activities yeah. where there were yes. maybe more black people so that yeah. I had a, an understanding of my yeah. origins, yeah. Um, so which, which was really, yeah, really heritage, and, yeah. yeah, which was really important. I think for kind of a middle-aged white woman, I think that's yeah. quite Amazing. progressive, yeah. you know, yeah. in the yeah. early 80s, I think that was quite progressive thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for my children, again, we grow up in, they're growing up in quite a white majority area. Yeah. Um, but uh, my husband is half Argentinian, so all of their cousins, like there's 11 cousins all together, and we all live really, really close to each other. So their cousins are all slightly different shades of, uh, <laughs> of that kind of, you know, Latin yeah. tone. And then you've got my kids that are darker. and mm. So they are growing up in a family where there is a variety yeah. of skin mm. colour, but at school there's not that many yeah. black children. I think I could count them on two fingers, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and they're both um, mine. Yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, there's a few mixed race kind of kids kind of scattered throughout mm. the school. But I, again, I think I need to take a leaf out of my mum's book yeah. and try and educate the kids yeah. about, about my Zimbabwean, you know, heritage yeah. and, and just open their eyes to there's more than yeah. maybe just like the white culture isn't the only isn't yeah, the only culture does that make sense yeah i think it's really important actually yeah. to um because I, I home educate my children right. and so quite often i will make conscious decisions to bring in oh, there's, there's a poet grace nichols and there's a lot of black poetry in there oh, and there's different dialects mm. that we do and different literature that we explore and artists of different origins and this is an, in, an artist from india this is an artist from paris this is so to try wow, and say do you know what this we're not the only ones that mm. produce and what we produce right. is not you know i'd say we like white yeah, culture yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not all that's out yeah. there but there's so much in other cultures that it's you can so you know draw and pull on yeah. and you know and look at body art let's let's spend a day doing body art and no, see where exactly. that comes from and mm. and look into that and i think that we just we're always talking, aren't we, on the on the mum show about wanting our kids to be free mm. and wanting them to have their minds opened. Mm. We know what happens when we close ourselves in, yeah. and we know that Christ came for freedom. Yeah. Yeah. And there's just so there's such a rich world out there, oh, isn't absolutely. there, for us to try and lock them in, and this is how we do things, and that's mm. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and I think possibly it can come from a place of wanting to keep our kids mm. safe, and you know. Mm. Um, I, so I, I've spoken really positively about my mum and dad because they're amazing, but um, there is also mm -hmm. a slight kind of narrow worldview in that when my school went to visit a mosque, I wasn't allowed to go, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I was kept at home, yeah. and it's that kind of, oh, oh, no, you can't do that because, I don't know, you might get influenced yeah. or... Yeah, I, know. I, I don't... I'd love to... It's possibly a conversation I need to have, kind of, what was mm -hmm. that... What was that about? What yeah. were you protecting me from? Mm -hmm. Because I think... It, it's actually more dangerous, yes. mm. right, to, yeah. to put those totally. yeah, barriers around. Ignorance isn't empowering. No. Yeah, I child-minded for a number of years, actually, home-based child care. And um, a, a few of my friends that were believers were really concerned about some of the people that I child-minded for, which is funny because I'm like, I don't know why, but there was a family that was a really... Um, amazing family uh, that were um, from their own religion actually they create their own religion mm -hmm. and he used to say his own prayers to um, age-old spirits mm -hmm. and he would sit there and pray at the dinner table and I was like bro you know I'm not gonna not have you in my home yeah, because of yeah, that because I, I don't believe that threatens my yeah. faith and then and one of the little girls was from a pagan worship mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. and again it's not that I'm celebrating another culture or another belief but I had no reason for it to threaten my no, family right. it was this is a child in my home that yeah. I wanted to care for yeah. and love and look after and actually um, in um, Corinthians it says this even though I am free of the demands and expectations of everyone I have become a voluntary servant to any and order in to reach a wide range of people for Christ. Mm. 
There's yeah. such an openness yeah. in that. Yeah. And it goes on actually, which is, which is not totally relevant to say about the things that even though I am like, even though I reach these people, I'm not like these people. Mm. Even though mm. some of it's more, more in a negative connotation, that's why I don't want to read the whole passage because in actual fact, I think that that top scripture encompasses mm. all of that, how we have to voluntarily take, a, 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 I suppose, a, a, an attitude of serving so mm. that all can see Christ through us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it, I think it's really important. I was a bit like you, hoping in 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 that my I think my parents were were so concerned about the outside influences that were so, somehow that they kind of needed to kind of keep us separate. So we weren't mm-hmm. so we weren't allowed to watch certain programs right. or go certain yeah. places. Or um, but actually for for my children, I want them to kind of have a spirit and of of kind of non-judgment yeah. non-judgment yeah. of openness of acceptance yeah. of love of vulnerability of courage all of those things yeah. that we talk so much about on this show so, yeah. uh, and i don't think we can do that and keep you know because because we're christians that we have to keep ourselves separate and protected mm. it's just the opposite of what yeah. the gospel Absolutely. is saying to us isn't Absolutely. it yeah. 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 it's really interesting we were talking earlier about an experience i'd had as a teenager when they'd had a lot of refugee mm. men move down our road, mm. uh, hundreds. And so I would be one of the only females walking into town. Mm. And from their culture, it was completely acceptable to, I don't know what you call it, like catcall? Heckle. Heckle, Heckle yeah. shout call at out, women, shout out, yeah. pull on your coat, pull on your bag, all this sort of thing, try and get your attention. Gosh, that's... And it, like as a 14-year-old girl up until 18, that was terrifying. Right, yeah. mm. um, really, really scary. And I never really understood why later in my narrative I ended up working with refugees. And I thought, that's, a, that's really interesting. How did that kind of happen? But when I look back at it, my parents' response to my intimidation, my fear, my difficult experience was that they became integrated with some really nice refugee families who we had dinner with, mm. who came to play. So good. Yeah. My dad would go up to, uh, they would put them in like a, like a prison to remove them and send them back. And my dad would take mm. us up there and my dad would go and look after these people. They would witness to this people. We had Amazing. people who were being saved. We had people who were already saved and coming mm. over so and they would good. just be welcomed in. And I think there's a lesson there, isn't yeah. there, that actually... 100%. The way to deal with these things isn't to isolate our kids, but it's to show a better way. Right, absolutely. And I think, Claire, what you said about kind of welcoming these children into your home, what you were doing, you were being Jesus to them, no matter what their race or their religion. You were showing the love of Christ, and that's what what we need to be doing, I think. Yeah, so important. It's a topic, it is. isn't it? Do you know, I, I, like, I think you said right at the beginning, didn't you, about keeping the conversation That's going. It. That's it. Just uh, there can't be at any point that we stop having this discussion no. and just brushing things under the carpet, yeah. being afraid to talk about things. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. good. Hope we've loved having you here oh, today. Are we finished? We've finished yeah, already. Yeah. You could keep going all day. I really could. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's been so much fun having you. you. We really appreciate the wisdom you've brought as well. Well, we hope you guys have enjoyed today's show. Please do, if you want to hear more about Hope and about what she's up to or more about the topics we're discussing on the show, then do head over to our website at promisecollective.co.uk. And in the meantime, we hope you enjoy the rest of your day and we'll catch up with you very soon. Don't forget to say hello. We're at promisecollective.co.uk. Bye.